order. Omar was the caliph, the caliph Omar. So, Ibn al-As asked Caliph Omar what he was meant to do with the famous library, <coughs> and that was the answer that he received. If the content of these books is in accordance with the Quran, they are useless. If, in the other hand, they contradict the Quran, they are undesirable. You can destroy them. The main problem that we have with that account is that it is an account six, written 600 years after the events. And uh, the problem is that we have no source from the 6th or even the 6th, 7th uh, century that mentions the existence of the Library of Alexandria at that time. So, despite of the fact that Luciano Camfora, in his uh, La Biblioteca Scomparsa, uh, made the hypothesis that it was the Muslim Congress who burned the library, it's impossible to uh, sustain that account because simply we don't have any source from the 6th century, from the 7th century AD, uh, which mentions the existence of the library. Second hypothesis, Theodosius' decree. In the year 391 AD, the Imperator Theodosius ordered the destruction of all pagan temples. And then the Patriarch, Theophilus of Alexandria, executed that order, according to Socrates of Constantinople. So, uh, the question is, in that we have only one text, uh, one main text, which is the text of Socrates of Constantinople, and what is said in that text is that there was uh, Petros, uh, who uh, together with uh, a group of people, of Christians, uh, they persecuted uh, uh, a woman called Hypatia, and she took refuge at the Caesarion. Caesarion. And then this woman was killed. This is what, we, the, what the ancient sources say. There is no mention of any destruction, either of the Caesarion or of the Serapion or whatever. Uh, uh, so, but Socrates of Constantinople says that at the same time the patriarch Theophilus ordered the destruction of the Serapion uh, because he was applying the order of uh, the uh, Imperator Theodosius. So we have two questions. First question. Did Patriarch Theophilus destroy the library of the museum? According to Socrates of Constantinople, he destroyed the Serapium, not the museum. And then we have an interesting account by Epiphanius, who, who says, around the same period, the site of the museum is today a desert place. So that means that at the end of the 4th century AD, the site of the museum was already a desert place. There was no library. So, second question, was the Serapium full of books when Theophilus destroyed it? According to Eunapius of Sardis, witness of the fact, he doesn't mention any destruction of the books. And Amianus Marcellinus, who visited Alexandria before 391, and uh, 391 is the year when uh, the Serapium was destroyed. The walls of the Serapium were destroyed. So, he talks already about the library and the Serapium as about something of the past. So, the conclusion is that in 391, the Serapium temple was destroyed. There were no books there. So, then there were the events in Alexandria during the 2nd and 3rd centuries. What happens during those two centuries? Listen well. First of all, in 172, <laughs> there was the Bucalic War. Then Avidius Cassius uh, made a rebellion uh, two years afterwards. Then Pisinius Niger made another rebellion. Then there was Caracalla's plundering of Alexandria in 215. Then there were those destructions by Valerian, 253 and 269. Then the, the Bruheium, which was the quarter where the museum was and the library of the museum was, uh, was destroyed by Aurelian in 273. And then Lucius Domitius Domitianus made a revolt some years afterwards. And on the top of it, 
<laughs> there was an earthquake in 365 where 50,000 people died, according to ancient sources, uh, in Alexandria. So, where is the library of the museum during that period? <laughs> Let us go to Caesar conquest in 48 BC, because it's impossible that the library was still extant with all what happened. So we are going to, what we are going to do, well, first of all, the people who say that it was Caesar who burned the library of Alexandria, uh, they say that we have several sources in antiquity that mention the fact. So in antiquity, nobody said that, was, that uh, uh, it was either well, the Muslim came after, afterwards, or uh, Theophilus, or, or the, what he said is when 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 a cause of the destruction of the of, of the Library of Alexandria is given, uh, it is Caesar. No other cause is given. So that account is given by Ammianus and Horatius in the fourth century, and by Dio, Plutarch, and Aulus Gellius in the second century. So the idea, the, what we, they say is that Caesar burned the library down in 48 BC per accident. So that means uh, uh, it was not intentionally, but uh, there was a fight between his fleet and the fleet of the Egyptians. And uh, uh, during that fight, uh, so according to some accounts, it was the fleet of Caesar. According to other accounts, it was the fleet of the Egyptians who took fire, and the fire went to the first uh, buildings uh, beside uh, the, the, the port, and from there to the library of the museum, and then the library took fire. What is the criticism that has been given to that theory? First of all, that the accounts have been made long time after the events. Secondly, that more ancient historians don't mention the fact. And thirdly, that there were proofs of library activity after the first century BC. So let us see what ancient sources say. Athenaeus of Nocrates, who uh, was uh, flourishing around uh, 200, uh, the year 200 AD, <coughs> he says, as for the number of books and for the foundation of the libraries and the museum collection, why shall I even talk about it since they are in all men's memories? He talks about that as something of the past. But he refers to a building that was added to the museum by Claudius in the first century AD. And he says he refers to literary activity. Literary activity doesn't mean books, but literary activity in the museum. Cassius Dio. So we, we go uh, from the beginning of the third century and uh, we, we, uh, we go uh, to more ancient times, to go the closer that we can to the events to see if there is a picture that emerged. Cassius Dio says, many things took fire during the war with Caesar so that everything burnt, the stores in the port and the storage, storage of wheat and books, they happen to be excellent. Tiziano Dornadi argues that it was written in the Greek apothecai ton biblon, and that means books to be exported because it's, it's written apotheke and not um, and not uh, bibliotheke. I have found other insta instances of apotheke biblon uh, to refer to a library. Uh, so uh, there's no problem with the word apotheke ton biblon. It doesn't mean a storage. You know. If you have books to be export, and Cassius Dio talk, uh, talk, uh, talks about uh, uh, the, the, the books of Alexandria, um, it is difficult to imagine uh, a large quantity of books just stored there for, 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 in order to be export, exported. But in any case, the, the phrase apothecai ton biblon in antiquity can perfectly refer to a library. Tertullian, uh, at the beginning of the third century AD, says that today at the Serapium, the libraries, the collections of uh, Ptolemaeus, um, 
are um, are shown uh, with the um, with the letters with the in the Hebrew letters. So the Septuagint books are shown uh, with their uh, Hebrew letters. So that's interesting because this account shows that uh, according to Tertullian, even if he hadn't been uh, uh, to Alexandria, uh, we are not sure about it at least, uh, what is clear is that he was talking about the Serapion and not anymore about the museum. Aulus Gellius, born around 125 AD in his Attic Nights, says, a huge number of books were either collected or copied by the Ptolemaic dynasty in Egypt up to, so according to the manuscripts, either 70,000 volumes or 700,000 volumes. But all those books were burnt during the first Alexandrian war, that is the war with Caesar. When the city was plundered, by chance, unintentionally and without premeditation, by auxiliary troops. We are far from the events, but this is what is said at the beginning, or at the middle of the second century. Suetonius then says that the mission took care of restoring libraries which were destroyed by fire, spending a lot of money for that. He searched for copies through all the empire and sent a mission to Alexandria with the task of copying and correcting the texts. That is very interesting because first of all, uh, the, the mission lived at the end of the first century AD and if the mission had to replace books of a burnt library in Alexandria that means that necessarily there was a burning of Alexandria uh, before that destroyed the library of Alexandria this is a kind of uh, recreation of uh, what the library of Alexandria could have been. Plutarch. So here we are already at the end of the first century AD or the beginning of the <coughs> second century AD. In his life of Caesar, he says, when the enemy endeavored to cut off his communication by sea, Caesar was forced to divert that danger by setting fire to his own ships, which after burning the docks, then spread on and destroyed the great library. And he, in his life of Marcus Antonius, he adds that Marcus Antonius emptied the library of Pergamon, which was the rival library, and offered it to Cleopatra to replace uh, the books that were lost. Lucan, at the middle of the first century AD, mentions in his De Bello Civili Kiwili uh, or Pharsalia, which is an epic poem and not a history book, that Caesar sent some burning arrows to the Egyptian fleet and he adds that the fire destroyed nearby buildings. He doesn't say anything about the library of Alexander, but if he is writing a, a book to the glory of Caesar, I doubt if he would have uh, thought that it was a good idea to mention that it was Caesar who destroyed that famous library. Then we have Seneca at the middle of uh, first century AD, quoting a lost book of Livy, who was a contemporary of the events, and that is very interesting, Livy was a contemporary of the events. Uh, he says, 40,000 books were burnt at Alexandria. Let someone else praise this library as the most noble monument to the wealth of kings, as did Titus Livius, who says it was the most distinguished achievement of the good taste and solicited of kings. There was effectively, uh, the, the, it's clear that in ancient sources, without any, any doubt, that the library of Alexandria burned uh, sometime before Seneca. Then we have Strabo. Strabo uh, is uh, an author who lived at the end of the first century BC and at the beginning of the first century A, uh, AD. What have I written here? Okay. <laughs> so he has. It's he's very interesting because uh, uh, Strabo 
uh, has been twice to Alexandria, once during his youth and a second time in 25 BC. So, if we have to trust the ancient historians who say that it was Caesar who burned the late library of Alexandria, here we have someone who went to Alexandria a very short time after the events. What does he say? He talks about Eratosthenes and he says, on this subject, Eratosthenes has checked many books that fill the important library he had at his disposal. This library is praised by Hipparchus. I am very much surprised by the fact that he has to refer to Hipparchus, who lived in the second century BC, in order to, see, to, say, to, 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 to say that that library was important. If the library of Alexandria was still extant uh, uh, during his times, he would have said, well, I have seen it. I was there twice. Then Strabo, Strabo sorry, describes the museum. And he says, the museum is also a part of the royal palaces. It has a public walk, an exedra with seats, and a large house in which is the common mess hall of the men of learning who share the museum. This group of men not only hold property in common, but also have a priest in charge of the museum, who formerly was appointed by the kings, but is now appointed by Caesar. So, there is a museum, there are scholars there. He doesn't mention any library. Very strange. Then he mentions the Serapeum and other sacred precincts of ancient times as somehow neglected monuments, Ecleleimenapos. So already the Serapeum was quite neglected during his time. Then there is a very interesting account by uh, Strabo. He talks about <coughs> two writers of his time, Eudorus and Ariston who deal with the rising of the Nilus in summer. And uh, the problem is that the contents of the books of these two authors are virtually the same, uh, uh, according to Eudorus, even from the point of view of the style. And Eudorus accuse, accuses Ariston of copying. And uh, he wants to know who is responsible for that. And he says, being in want of copies of those two books, <coughs> in order to make a comparison, he wanted to know who had copied whom. Uh, I compared one author, his work on the Nihilus, to the other one, his other works. But which of the two men is the one who copied the other's work might be discovered at Ammon's temple, Luxor. Eudor Eudorus accused Ariston, the style of the book of Eudorus, however, is rather Aristonian. So, he doesn't have uh, the book of Aristo who talks about the Nile. And he says if someone wants to know the truth, he has to go all the way till Luxor to check. So, he has been in, in Alexandria, he didn't have the possibility in Alexandria to check that fact. That means that in the Library of Alexandria, a book, a very important book about the Nile was not there. And then, if someone wants to know it, he has to go to Luxor, because there you have a temple where there is a library, and there you could check, because they have the book. What is the conclusion? Then we have Julius Caesar. In his Bellum Civile, Caesar talks about a fire that he felt obliged to put to the enemy's fleet in the port of Alexandria. He does not mention any subsequent fire in the city. Even if that had happened, he was not expected to mention the destruction of a library in a propaganda writing. He was writing about himself, at the third person, as Caesar writes. And he's not going to say, I destroyed the most beautiful uh, and important library of the ancient world. <laughs> assessment of data. Uh, so, we have accounts of the library's burning in 48 BC. We also have accounts of museum activity after 48 BC. It seems, of course, there were books in Alexandria after 48 BC. And uh, the most probab probable thing was that they started using the library of the Serapeum, the doctor's library. That would fit very well with the account of Tertullianus, who said that uh, uh, the texts of uh, the translation 
of uh, the Hebrew Bible were shown at the Serapeum. In any case, the theory of Camphora, according to which the library was burnt by the Muslims during the conquest of Umar, is impossible to uh, reconcile with the primary sources that we have. The accounts of the burning after the death of Caesar, Cassius Dio, Plutarch, and Aulus Gellius mentioned that the loss of the library happened during the First Alexandrian War. Suetonius bear witness, bears witness to the fact of the burning. So does Seneca, quoting Livius, who was a contemporary of the events. And Lucan mentions a fire in Alexandria. It's, we are talking about many sources, and they are concordant. They are, at least, they are consistent. There was museum, uh, uh, um, uh, an activity in the museum after 48 BC. Strabo mentions a group of scholars that we have seen at the museum. We have seen the first century AD inscription about Tiberius Claudius Balbellus. And Suetonius says that Claudius added a building to the museum and organized public readings there. There is presence of books in Alexandria after 48 BC. Uh, we know that, uh, according to Suetonius, the mission replaced lost books for the Library of Alexandria. And or uh, uh, Marcus Antonius, according to Plutarch. Athenaeus is the last author to mention a literary activity in the museum. But the libraries at the same time are, by him, considered as something of the past. And then Tertullian is the last author to mention the existence of books at the Serapeum. We know that afterwards we have this awful 3rd century AD in, uh, in Alexandria where you have revolution upon revolution upon plundering upon earthquake. So Camphora's theory, based upon the figure given by Seneca, 40,000 volumes destroyed, and the account of Cassius Dio, Apothecae ton Biblon, he thinks that only some storerooms containing books for exportation were destroyed by Caesar. Imagine what is what 40,000 books for exportation. 40,000 books uh, uh, is for sure the most important library of, uh, of antiquity after the library of, uh, of, uh, of the museum. It's a huge amount of books. Uh, we don't have any, any mention of uh, such a kind of exportation of books in antiquity. The collected data do not allow us to sustain the theory of Camphora. Conclusion. There was a burning of the library's museum during the First Alexandrian War. Most probably, there was a partial replacement of lost books under the mission, and probably for the Serapeum. The use of the Serapeum is attested as a replacement library from the first century AD until 200. Um, and there was activity in the museum at least until 200. Uh, I would wish to add some last words about the library of Alexandria. Um, during antiquity, we have a series of changes with respect to the center of Hellenism. Um, in the 13th century before Christ, it is Mycenae who is the center of Hellenism. Then, from the 8th to the 6th century BC, uh, the center of uh, Hellenism moves to uh, Miletus, where we have the first philosophers who appeared. Then, in the 5th and 4th century BC, the center of Hellenism is Athens. So Alexandria becomes afterwards the center of Hellenism, thanks to that library. So, what is very important to understand is that uh, during the history of humankind, you have periods where you have an intense activity, uh, a crea creative activity. Uh, for instance, 5th and 4th century BC uh, in Athens. And then you need, you have a, a need for a, a period where you need to edit, to translate, to make synthesis, to recollect the data. Uh, I can take uh, an example which is much closer to us, the 60s. The 60s is an incredibly creative period. 
either in the field of music or in the field of linguistics or in the field of uh, uh, language sciences or in the field of literature or in whatever. Then after 75, you have a long period where you don't have the same creative activity. You have a need for a reassessment, uh, for editing, for uh, having encyclopedia and uh, uh, compendium and uh, uh, summary and uh, uh, translations. So it is very much like the, the, the period uh, that came after uh, the incredibly creative uh, period that we had in, at Athens in the 5th and 4th century BC. That is the period of Alexandria. It is the period of scholarship. And uh, thanks to that period in Alexandria, all the literary texts of uh, Greek literature could be edited. And then, in a very natural way, what happens in Alexandria that is that they discovered the principle of the dictionary, they created grammar, the first grammars appears, appear at Alexandria, and uh, uh, you have the beginning of scholarship. And this is uh, what the Library of Alexandria means <coughs> for our world. Thank you very much. Ask questions. I have, I'd like to ask you a question about um, this Tiberius Claudius Baldillus. Mm -hmm. It's fascinating that that's clearly he's clearly a, a, a Roman, and yet he's listed as being a librarian. Mm -hmm. And I know that in uh, in the libraries in Rome, there, if you look at the inscriptions, the people in charge. It was always a Greek who was in charge of the Greek wing and a, a non-Greek name that was in charge of the Latin wing. Do you think that perhaps um, he represents a, an expansion of perhaps the Latin text? It's difficult to know. Uh, we know very little about this uh, Tiberius uh, uh, Claudius Balbedus. Uh, what is sure is that uh, we know, uh, thanks to Strabo, that uh, after uh, 48 BC, there still was um, an activity in the museum. Uh, so, uh, and that uh, he mentions that uh, the, the the people were appointed by Caesar. So, by Caesar, by the by the, the Roman imperator. So, uh, it's not surprising that you have uh, someone with a, with a Latin name uh, as the head of the museum and the library. But um, this is what I can say about that. Yeah? I wanted also to ask about this Roman librarian. Um, I, I assume the inscription's in Greek. So first of all, it's only um, we have a, an inscription, and it's a partial. Uh, it, we have only part of uh, the inscription. We don't have the whole inscription. So. Uh, uh, for sure, the words uh, uh, Biblioteca Alexandrina and uh, the beginning of the word uh, or the end of the word museum appear in that inscription. Um, Do you, does it have the title for a librarian or head librarian? I will tell you exactly what is, uh, if I find it here. Yeah. So we have Lucorum Omnium que 